Hello, Bill Hopkins here for the Native Plant Society of Texas. This will be an overview of our 1996 symposium held in El Paso, Texas, October 18th through the 20th of that year. Images and text in this PowerPoint are by Betsy Ferris and will be narrated by me. The symposium focused on the Chihuahuan Desert area in far west Texas. The meeting was held in conjunction with the El Paso and New Mexico Native Plant Societies with a record 278 attending. This is El Capitan in the Guadalupe Mountains. Several field trips were conducted for various skill levels in Guadalupe Mountains State Park. The park is a two hour drive east of El Paso, close to Carlsbad, New Mexico. Some on the field trip camped in the park and a few stayed in Carlsbad the night before to watch the bat flight. The Guadalupe Mountains are a part of one of the best examples of an ancient marine fossil reef on earth. It's a horseshoe shaped calcium carbonate reef, which is the same composition as the Bahamas. The water would have been very clear and blue. Only a portion is above ground now, and the Guadalupe Mountains are one of those portions. Guadalupe Peak is the highest point in Texas at 8,749 feet. The main visitor center includes a natural history museum and a gift shop. 75 people showed up for the Thursday morning hikes to either McKittrick Canyon or Guadalupe Peak. The hike to Guadalupe Peak is a strenuous hike to the top of Texas. The hike that we will see here was through McKittrick Canyon. McKittrick Canyon is known for its variety of plant and animal life. The hike was 6.8 miles round trip. As this region becomes hotter and drier, it is causing madrones and maples to gradually retreat to their present isolated pockets near water. The conifers have also become similarly confined to the mountaintops. The madrone tree, shown here with reddish leaves, is a distinctive species with red colored bark and evergreen leaves. This madrone has succumbed to the changing climate. The health and long-term viability of these plants becomes more and more in jeopardy. The first part of the McKittrick Canyon Trail follows McKittrick Creek. What is unusual is that it flows year round, but is often partially underground. Sotol, also known as desert spoon and desert candle, is a drought tolerant plant with a flower spike that can grow to a length of 10 feet. Land that makes up the parklands was originally owned by a surveyor named Pratt. After 2.4 miles, the path reaches his historic cabin built in the 1930s. Rangers live in Pratt Lodge year round. Floor, walls, and roof are all stone. The McKittrick Canyon hike is near the eastern edge of Guadalupe Mountains National Park. This path links with other backcountry routes suitable for overnight backpacking. Alligator juniper, Juniperus depiana, is also called checkerbark juniper, Tecate and Tlaxcal. The distinctive bark 
is furrowed into checkered plates. This fragrant juniper with dark blue-green foliage and copper-colored fruit can grow to the height of 48 feet in a landscape. Big Tooth Maple. Its native habitat is in moist soils of canyons and mountains and plateaus like this one. Leotris along the mountain trail. Pinion pine, Pinus edulis, is a very slow growing and is usually found at elevations of 4,000 to 7,000 feet. The species name, edulis, describes the edible large seeds that were a staple food of Southwestern Indians. This is a section of McKittrick Creek that flows above ground. The deer are relatively tame. One is looking right at the camera, just left of the center. Snakeweed, native to dry, open, and calcareous mesas and plains, generally considered an indicator of poor management in range areas. At first, the plants on the trail are typical of the Chihuahuan Desert with yucca, agaves, and cacti. but with some pine and juniper trees. With the moister, cooler environment up in the canyon, ash, oak, and big tooth maple become more abundant. Here are 1996 Native Plant Society of Texas president, Terry Tate, is taking a photo. The trail that leads to the grotto. The grotto is in a cavity beneath a, climb, a limestone cliff with stalagmite-like formations. ferns growing on the grotto wall. A second historic structure is Hunter Line Cabin. It's boarded up, but groups of bats hang upside down from the ceiling during the day. Ahead, the canyon becomes quite steep and the path climbs nearly 2,000 feet over the next two miles to McKittrick Ridge at 7,716 feet. A praying mantis. A final look at a madrone along the McKittrick Canyon Trail, the most scenic canyon in Guadalupe Mountains National Park. The Saturday night awards dinner was held in McKelligan Canyon in the Franklin Mountains. The Franklin Mountains are just north of the city of El Paso.
A Mexican dinner was served, and the entertainment was a dance folklorico. A recommended self-guided tour was of the grounds around the El Paso Centennial Museum at the University of Texas at El Paso. This museum was established in 1936 and its permanent exhibits focused on the natural and cultural history of the Chihuahuan Desert region. This is Dahlia in the foreground. The courtyard of the Centennial Museum at the university is called Jubilee Square. Tacoma Stands, also known as Yellow Bells, Esperanza, and Trumpet Flower. It has an enormous natural range, but the southwestern U.S. and Mexico plants are Tacoma Stands variety Angostata, which is shorter, more drought tolerant, and more cold tolerant than some of the tropical varieties. Turpentine bush is a good evergreen shrub for full sun in the Southwest with aromatic leaves and eye-catching fall flowers. It can be arranged as a shrubby ground cover, a hedge, or a specimen plant. An exhibit was being held in the Museum of Native Plant Watercolors by the Bachman sisters. The art was dated as early as 1942. Located on the Centennial Museum grounds and in the immediate vicinity are the Chihuahuan Desert Demonstration Gardens. This part of the gardens consisted of Ocotilla, Yucca, and Mexican Buckeye. Over 600 species of native plants from the greater Chihuahuan Desert region are grown in the Chihuahuan Desert Gardens making it one of the largest in the world. Barrel cactus on the left. Franklin Mountain State Park in the upper Franklin Mountains is the largest urban park in Texas. People come from around the world to study the 24,000 acres of the Franklin Mountains, all of which is within the El Paso city limits. Here's a look back at the parking area in the city of El Paso. The summit of North Franklin Peak rises to an elevation of 7,192 feet, approximately 3,000 feet above the city below. Charles Galt, president of the El Paso chapter of the Native Plant Society, led the tour. The Franklins are the largest sustained mountain range in Texas. It's an important area containing an entire Chihuahuan Desert mountain range. Saltbush. There are many varieties of this semi-evergreen shrub, but it is important to wildlife as cover and a food source and recognized to attract large numbers of native bees. The mountains provided most of the basic necessities of prehistoric peoples, including stone for tools and weapons, plants and animals for food and clothing, and infrequent springs for water. Graffiti on granite boulders is one of the hazards of modern man. 
so tall and prickly pear dot the landscape. A so tall and the Franklin Mountains. Opuntia, or prickly pear cactus, has a very wide range and up to 10 or more varieties have been described, making exact identification difficult. Usually the varieties are distinguished by pad size, spine distribution on the pad, spine color and size, and fruit length. Sidoats grandma is not only the state grass of Texas, but birds love the ripe seeds of this medium to tall grass. Ultimately, the trail network will offer a system of more than 100 miles of trails. Rock climbing is one of the park's recreational activities with established climbing areas in McElligan Canyon, all located within one of the largest international border communities in the Western Hemisphere, El Paso, Texas, and Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. Buffalo Gourd is in the cucumber, fam cucumber family and emits an unpleasant smell if touched, which explains another common name of stink gourd. A low shrubby turpentine bush was seen in the Franklin Mountains. Fairy duster, also known as Rio Grande stick pea, is a wooden shrub with many branches and a mimosa-like appearance. It prefers caliche and limestone of the South Texas Plains and Edwards Plateau and used for nectar, cover, food, and nesting for various wildlife, large and small. Apache plume is in the rose family. These rather thick shrubs appear unkempt, but in full flower, their white petals are attractive against the dark foliage. Fruit, cl fruit clusters with feathery purplish tails said to resemble Apache headdress. A close-up of one of the plumes, the fruit clusters with the feathery purplish tails are said to resemble Apache headdress. This ephedra has the common name of Spanish broom. The plant is a netophyte meaning it has neither flowers nor leaves and is easily overcome by other more hardy species. The green stem of the plant grows and branches from nodes. Instead of flowers, the plant develops cones, which produce spores. Suddenly the sky started getting darker and darker. At about 6,000 feet, it began to rain. Extra care was taken to traverse the slippery rocks. Fifteen minutes later, the sun came out. And for water cotton crevices, you would never have known there had been any precipitation. Precambrian rock, the oldest on the planet, is found in several areas within the park. These Precambrian deposits formed when life on Earth consisted only of one celled organisms. First glance, the Franklin Mountains may appear barren and desolate, but landforms range from dry lowlands to foothills, to shaded canyons and craggy peaks. Look closer 
and a wealth of plant and animal life can be found. Velvet ash and hackberry are in this view of the mountain. Mesquite is in the pea family. The seed pods are eaten by wildlife and prepared for human consumption as meals and cakes. An excellent tree for bees and nectar insects and cover for wildlife. Geologists classify the Franklins as a good example of tilted block fault mountains. This begins to form when near vertical faults fracture and are thus th thrust upward and tilt sharply under tremendous tectonic force. The abundance of small cacti, succulents, thorny shrubs, low grasses and desert wildflowers are all specially adapted to survive the rigors of Chihuahuan desert life. This is another view of the city of El Paso from the Franklin Mountains. Another recommended self-guided tour was of the Texas A&M University Agricultural Research and Extension Center in El Paso. Cowtongue cactus is in the foreground. Rosemary is widely used and does well in El Paso since the Trans-Pecos area has a Mediterranean climate. The El Paso County Master Gardeners care for the demonstration garden and have found that the Rio Grande River has both saline and chlorine, which affects the plants and production, especially during a drought. Water, salinity, and the arid conditions make gardening, landscaping, and farming a challenge in this region. Sina Wislazinia, common names of canyon senna and shrubby senna. Its, na its native habitat are dry slopes and mesas. It's dependable in poor soil and fairly drought tolerant. Texas mountain laurel can tolerate a fair range of soils dry, rocky, calcareous, sandy to clay. But with all soil types, it needs good drainage. Desert willow on the left and a juniper on the right. The desert willow is adapted to desert washes and does best with just enough water to keep it blooming and healthily green through the warm buds. Named for its resemblance to willows, this popular ornamental tree is actually related to yellow bells and trumpet vine. Desert willow blooms. Choya in the foreground and six foot tall agave in the background. This cactus grows tall and upright and is also known as cane cactus and teddy bear choya. Its native habitat is mesas and desert and it prefers sandy gravelly soils but can tolerate sandy to clay to caliche. Cactus wren nest within the choya. The ephedra, or Spanish broom, sandy or gravelly hills and plains, dry creek beds, and scrubby areas. As Spanish explorers approached the Rio Grande from the south, they viewed two mountain ranges rising out of the desert with a deep chasm between. 
This site they named El Paso del Norte, or the Pass of the North, and it became the location of two future border cities, Ciudad Juarez on the south or right bank of the Rio Grande and El Paso, Texas on the opposite side of the river. The arrival of the first Spanish expedition at the Pass of the North in 1581 marked the beginning of more than 400 years of history in the El Paso area. To summarize the El Paso Symposium, one of the basic challenges of living in arid to semi-arid regions is obtaining an adequate supply of fresh water. El Paso leaders started planning in 1979 for proper conservation measures and management of human activity that has now stabilized El Paso's water supply and its conservation plan is one that other native Texas cities are now copying. Thank you for observing this overview of the 1996 Symposium of the Native Plant Society of Texas in El Paso, Texas.